Hi everyone, my name is Karis and welcome back to my corner of the internet where I talk about books and other things that I enjoy. In today's video I'm going to be talking about my goals for 2021, some bookish and some just general. I'm very much not a new year new me resolution sort of person, however I do like to set myself a few goals at the beginning of each year. I think that January is a good time to look back on the year that's gone by, not that 2020 is a great one to look back on, and also just look at things that I might want to do in the new year. But by the same token, these aren't things that I am like rigidly setting myself to having to do because I don't want to put that extra stress on myself. These are all just things that I think it would be really nice to do in 2021. If I manage to achieve them, then that's great. Well done me. But also if I don't manage to achieve them, then it's not a big deal. So I'll start out with my bookish goals because then if you're not interested in hearing about what I just want to do with my life, then you can just watch the bookish part of the video. So I've started out this year with setting myself a reading goal and I've set that to 50 books. I actually found it really difficult to sort of judge what would be a realistic number of books for me to be able to read in the year because when I was on booktube before, so from about 2014, to 2017 I was reading 70 80 books a year but then in 2018 and 2019 I've read around the 20 book mark because I came out of uni I started my job and I basically just stopped reading altogether in 2020 I read 35 books but most of them were from August onwards when I joined booktube again and picked up books again I would say that I read three quarters of those books from August so in terms of the month that I was actually reading for, I did manage to read quite a lot a month, by previous tokens at least, but I'm starting back at work in January, so I have a fear that my reading is just going to fall off a cliff again. I'm really hoping that being back on booktube and having people to talk about books again with and all that sort of stuff will help. So in the end, really, I couldn't be bothered to <laughs> figure out any maths of how much I might be able to read and just set it at 50, basically one book a week with two weeks to spare. And I think if I really try and prioritise my reading this year, which I would hope that I would be doing now that I'm back on booktube, I should be able to do it. Ideally, I'd like to read more. But for now, 50 is a good number, I think. And maybe in like June or July, halfway through the year, I'll have a look and reassess it depending on how many I've got to at that point. My second reading goal for the year is I just really want to try and branch out with my reading and explore new genres and new voices. So as I said I was on booktube before from 2014 to 2017, everyone probably knows that by now because I feel like I mention it all the time, um, but during that time I read pretty much exclusively young adult contemporary the only exception really being the books that I read for my university course because I studied English literature at uni. And I think one of the real reasons why my reading really slowed down in the past couple of years alongside being at work and just not prioritising it is because I didn't feel the same connection for a lot of young adult contemporary books that I once had. Don't get me wrong, there are still some that I really enjoy and there are still some that I am really interested in. But during that time period, I feel like anything and everything I was like yes 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 but now I feel like the number of books from that category that I really want to pick up is a lot smaller rather than just literally being anything so I think over the past couple of years I really had a bit of a bookish identity crisis with not really wanting to read the books that I was reading previously before but also not really knowing where to go next I feel like coming back to booktube has really helped with this and opened up so many doors for me because I feel like I found a lot more people who I watch who aren't just talking about the popular way contemporary books nowadays while I was on booktube before again that was the content that I was consuming all the time but since coming back I feel like I watch so many people who read such an array of things and it's really opened my eyes to all the possibilities of things that I could read so in 2021 I really want to go and pick up things that I might have been put off by before look into fantasy look into more historical fiction and just see what my reading tastes are. I did a bit of this in 2020. I read a fantasy that I really enjoyed. I read a historical fiction that I really enjoyed. I read a non-fiction that I really enjoyed, but I only really read one from each of those genres. So I'd really just like to develop on that in 2021. The next thing that I really want to do in 2021 is to do with finishing a series. And I would really like to finish reading the Poppy War series by I.F. Kuang. The Poppy War was the one fantasy book that I read in 2020 and I loved it. 
and I got the Dragon Republic for Christmas so I'm hoping that maybe sort of February time I'll get around to that and then there's only one other book to read because it's a trilogy so I really would like to try and finish it in 2021. I've always been notoriously bad for finishing series and The Poppy War is the first series that I've started in a really long time so it would be really nice to have just read all of it within the space of like a year or so. The only other real goal that I had to do with my actual reading is I would like to focus on my Around the World series that I started this year, which I called Literally Travelling. So I made a video in 2020 about books that I wanted to read from countries that I was meant to visit in 2020 but didn't get around to visiting. There was four books in that video for the four countries that I was meant to be traveling to and I only actually managed to finish one of them in 2020. So early in 2021 I would like to wrap up the rest of those books and then continue with the series. The reason why I didn't rush myself to finish it at the end of 2020 is because I didn't want to like half ass the videos. I really wanted to do incorporate other things other than just reading the books like I did in my Slovakia video where I cooked the national dish. I'd really like to do that in the other videos in the series as well and I just didn't feel like I had the time to dedicate to that at the end of 2020 with all the Christmassy things and content and just life stuff that I was doing at the time. So in the new year I first of all want to prioritise the other three books on that TBR but I would also really like to continue on with the series and read some other books from all around the world because as I said in that video eventually in my life I would love to have read a book from every country of the world but obviously not setting that as a goal for 2021 because there are too many countries for the amount of books that I want to read in the year. So those were the only real goals in terms of my reading because I think with the idea that I want to branch out and explore different genres I didn't really want to limit myself to loads of things that I was telling myself that I had to read. However I do have a few more general bookish goals so first of all I would love to be involved next year in more readathons or collabs, things like that just with other booktubers. I feel like this is something that I've never really done before but towards the end of 2020 I feel like I've got talking to loads of different people and have just loved getting to know everyone and re-getting to know some people as well. So yeah I just love to do stuff like that. I've never done a live show before. I'm actually doing my first one like next week as I'm filming this with Shannon and Anna so that will be really fun and I would just love to do more of that in 2021. The other booktube goal that I'd really like to achieve is a bit of consistency on my channel mainly in terms of uploading because I feel like at the moment I'm a bit sporadic so I would really like to work out a upload schedule with if not days at least like a time of day that I set my upload at so like 6 p.m or 10 a.m I don't know and I don't really know what people would prefer so if anyone has any thoughts let me know in the comments I don't really know if it matters at all I haven't worked that out yet in terms of an actual upload schedule I would really like to be able to do two videos a week and I think that's what I'm going to try for at the start of January but as I said I go back to work in January I'm only going to be working the equivalent of two days a week at the start and then still on furlough for the rest of the days but obviously as the furlough scheme wraps up towards the end of April I think at the moment who knows it could change again but that is likely to be ending this year hopefully and then I'll be back at work full time and I just I just don't know so just consistency in general is what I'm saying for the goal. I haven't like set myself a subscriber goal or anything like that because I feel like if anything I should be trying to focus less on numbers this year. Um, it's something that I always tell myself not to do like not get caught up in numbers but it is something that I find quite difficult. Not because I necessarily want to have more subscribers. I think my problem is I restarted my channel from an audience that I'd already built up before. So the majority of my subscribers are people that were subscribed to me between 2014 and 2017. And either people don't have their channels anymore or people just don't care about the sort of videos that I post now, which is completely fine. I completely understand it. But I feel like I have this sort of reaction when I see the number of views that I get compared to the number of subscribers that I have. And really, I'm not bothered about my view numbers but I feel like to other people they would look at it and be like god she's got this many subscribers and she only gets this many views like what's wrong with her or I don't know I get really in my head about it and I think I really need to stop 
in 2021 like just try and look away from that because at the end of the day i would rather have like 10 views per video and then be people that really want to engage with me or just people that i'm friends with i have two final general bookish goals the first is i would really like to use storygraph this year so i will leave a link to my storygraph profile in the description if you want to go and follow it and please feel free to leave yours in the comments as well so i can follow you back storygraph is basically an alternative to goodreads i actually think it's a way better platform because you can do all sorts of cool like analytical things on it like look at pie charts of like genres I think and the gender of the authors that you've read from and all different sorts of things but I haven't really explored fully yet the full possibilities of it however I do really like what I've seen of it and ultimately I would like to transition from Goodreads to Storygraph because I prefer it as I said but at the moment I'm going to be using both because I'm really nosy and most of the people that I know from YouTube have Goodreads profiles and not Storygraph profiles and I just like to see what people are doing. And the final bookish goal that I have is I would like to do a bit more unhauling. I've actually done quite a lot of unhauling this year and have managed to sell quite a lot of my books on Depop which has been great for the bank balance to make up a bit of the money that I haven't been earning while being on furlough. Um, but I would just like to do more of that in 2021 as i have said so many times i read a lot of ya a few years ago and i felt the need to buy every single book that i read and i look at a lot of them now and just think i don't need it i'm not going to read it again if i didn't really love it then does it really need to be on my shelves and i would really love for my shelves to just be a representation of the books that i really either really really liked or loved or have some sort of <laughs> emotional sentimental connection to and as i say I, i've started that in 2020 but i would just really like to continue with that in 2021 so those were all of my bookish goals for 2021 if anyone's still with me and is still interested i'm just gonna quickly run through my general life goals things that i would like to do so the first thing that i would really like to do in 2021 is i want to run a half marathon there is already a half marathon that i've signed up for to do in 2021 i've been signed up to it for quite a long time i've paid my entrance fee I've committed to it. I got quite into running in 2020, which is something that I never thought would happen. I've been sort of a on off runner for several years. I did it quite a bit when I was at uni and then like packed it in as soon as I started my job. I think the reason I stuck to it in 2020 is because I'd already started it before anything, before I'd even heard about coronavirus. So I'd already been doing a little bit of running, but then obviously when I was put on furlough, I had a lot more free time on my hands. So I decided to make it like my aim to run a certain number of miles every month. And I did that. And yeah, then I decided to sign up for a half marathon. <laughs> so the furthest at this moment in time that I've been able to run is eight and a half miles. So I've got to do an extra like four and a half on top of that, which I mean, I don't like the idea of it, but I'm gonna do it. So the half marathon that I've signed up for is actually at Hampton Court Palace in London. And that backdrop just looks so nice. I'm sure I won't feel like, oh, that's so nice when I'm doing the run because I'll be dying inside. It's meant to be happening in March, so we'll see. I'm doubtful that it will be happening, but if it doesn't go ahead like at that location, I'll either try and do it virtually or I'll find another one to sign up for. That's the plan. So yeah, I'm actually training for it now. Like I've started my 12 week training plan. I was thinking of doing like a video just for myself really, like a vlog of my training plan to like upload at the end when I've done it. I doubt anyone would care about that, but mainly just for my own enjoyment to look back on. That might be something that I might do this year. The next personal goal that I have for this year is I would really like to do some writing. I have no sort of quantity or idea for how much in mind but i love writing i've always been a writer my dream since i was very very little has been to be an author but it's something that i feel like i rarely prioritize so i would just like to do more of it in 2021 the next thing that i would like to do if the situation allows is i would really like to travel somewhere alone i love travel as i've talked about a few times on my channel i edit travel guides for a living it's a big part of me and sometimes there are places that i want to go and i think 
I haven't got anyone to go with, like there's no one available at the particular time when I want to go or people just aren't interested in going to that particular place. And in 2019, I actually decided to sort of challenge myself to go on a little trip by myself. So I didn't go very far. I only went to Northern Ireland. I went to Belfast and Derry, but just that whole experience of doing it myself. And I went on like a day trip with a whole group of people that I'd never met before, just to like the Giants Causeway and stuff. And I really enjoyed it. The whole experience I really enjoyed. So I would like to do that again in 2021 if possible, but maybe to somewhere in Europe. And I would really like to push myself to stay like in a hostel so I can meet more people because I've stayed in hostels before, but I've always been with someone else. That to some people might not seem like a lot, but to me that's like a real step out of my comfort zone because once I meet people, I'm fine, but I feel like going into a, a space like that, like a hostel room or something or a bar where you don't know anyone, it's a real challenge for me. And I just have this voice in the back of my head being like, everyone's looking at you like nobody likes you why would anyone want to speak to you like that it would be scary but i think it's a step that i want to take to be able to do it more in the future obviously this one depends on if i can travel anywhere full stop and the last two things that i would like to do this year are both craft related i've got very into crafting in 2020 again it's something that i really loved doing previously but had sort of not prioritized and really picked up again when I had a lot more time. So I primarily do embroidery. It's something that I've really found a love for this year. And I have a little Instagram account dedicated to primarily again, embroidery. It's called Created by Karis. I'll link it in the description if anyone wants to follow it. But I have found like a real little community there and so many people that I follow have their own small businesses, small Etsy shops or just sell things through their Instagram. And I would really love to set up a little Etsy store in 2021, but I need to think about it properly because it takes me quite a long time to embroider things. And I need to think like, would I do things on commission? Like what people asked for or would I make things and then sell them? I don't know, I need to think it through, but I would love, 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 love <laughs> to do that this year. And the final crafty thing that I want to do is I want to crochet a cardigan because I got like this beginner's crochet kit for Christmas. I'm currently making a giraffe and I'm really enjoying it. It's not something that I thought I would ever be able to do because my grandma tried to teach me how to knit when I was a child and I was terrible at it. So I thought crochet would not be for me, but I am really loving it. And I would just like to make a cardigan. I just think it would be so satisfying to wear and be like, I made that. I mean, something like this. I guess if it fails, I can just tell people that I made this. So those are all of my goals for 2021. As I said, if I achieve these, then great. If I don't, then it's no big deal. And I'm sure I'll check back in at the start of next year, which doesn't even bear thinking about the idea of 2022. That, no. But I'm sure I'll check back in then to let you know if I've achieved these or if I haven't. If you've got any resolutions in common with me, then feel free to let me know in the comments or just let me know something that you would really like to do this year or just leave an emoji, whatever you would prefer. Other than that though, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're all keeping safe and staying well and I will see you again next time. Bye.